Yes. Um, in my home, well, we know that 70% of the young people leave the church before they are adults. Now, in my home church, uh, it's not a very big one. We are about 120 members. Um, a young woman went, uh, told a testimony, and she went to the front, and she said, I'm so happy in our church, 100% of the young people stay in the church in the last 20 years. All the children are baptized, all of them are active in the church. And then I, it just, you know, made my hair stand up and it made me feel cold. Cool. It's true, I didn't realize. I have three daughters, all of them are baptized. For me, I took it for granted. For me, this was just a natural way to go. But then I realized, no, it's not just normal. According to statistics, this is very abnormal. So I went home and I asked my three, two of them were at home, not all the three of them, one is married in Germany, but the other two were at home, and then I to asked them, why are you in the church? What is it that keeps you in the church? You know, there was a time when they were small, I remember our church is a, a bit a traditional church. It is, um, it has no people ha house beside, and our songs are very traditional. We, we adapt to the old people, you know, there's not no drums and no guitar, it's really very traditional. And sometimes I thought, let's go to another church once a month at least to see, you know, so you have a bit more children around you, more modern music, more uh, uh, praise with PowerPoint and, uh, and other instruments. And we did it a few times, two or three times, and then our daughter said, we don't like to go there, we want to be here. So then we continued in our church. And so I asked them, why are you still in the church? And they told me, you know, we always felt accepted in our church. If we did not come one Sabbath, people would come and ask, oh, we missed you last week, where were you? If we have a daughter, she plays the violin. Well, she has, she has ten, had 10 years of uh, music lessons, but, you know, she didn't reach the level that you hear here <laughs> when you were singing. It was beautiful. Um, she never reached that level. It was scratching. And, and, um, but every time she played in the church, there was an old lady coming to our door afterwards with five francs. It's about five euro. It's a big piece of money in mm -hmm. Switzerland. She would come with this big piece of money, money this film Lieber, we call it, and would give it to her and would say, thank you so much that you played. Mm -hmm. And we have another daughter playing the piano, about the same, you know, and the, every time they got a thank you and they never, never heard a word of criticism. And they said, you know, we feel loved in this church and this is why we stayed here. Mm -hmm. So this is something we think of when we started uh, Girls for Christ. Um, it was in 2008, we started with the idea um, and then in 2009, in January, we started in the German-speaking union. So that's North Germany, South Germany, that's Angeli um, Oh, she just went out. She is responsible for those two unions. Gerd Leila from Austria, and at that time I was responsible in Switzerland for women's ministries. So we, together, we started in 2009 with Girls for Christ because we thought we need to reach out. This is a way to reach out to young girls. Now, we experience Girls for Christ different in the different countries. In Switzerland, it's done different than in Austria and in Germany. But in Germany, they, have, they want to promote this a lot and they have applied for the evangelistic um, budget. There is quite some money at EUD for evangelistic purposes. That all the unions get their share. And uh, they apply for that and they get a big amount, some 85,000 euro they get just to promote Girls for Christ. So the German has, Germany has to pay 55,000 and rest, uh, uh, EUD, EUD 50, pays 55,000 and Germany um, has to pay the rest. So they get so much money from the unions to promote Girls for Christ. And it's done different in different countries. Bulgaria is applying now uh, to, um, to start Girls for Christ. Um, in Czechoslovakia they want to start. In, in Portugal they have started. So we try in the whole division that this is promoted and that we reach out to young girls. And how we could do this, it's, uh, we will listen to Doris. She will tell us how they did it, how they do it in Austria. So thank you, Doris, that you will tell us about your okay, personal thanks. experience. Okay, my name is Doris. I'm 34 years old, going to be 35 this year. This is my 
crazy but lovely family. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can switch up the light on this side. Um, I'm married, as you can see. We have two children, two girls. They are now eight and almost ten years old. The second one, well, actually the first one. We've been missionaries in Thailand for two and a half years, as you can see from the pictures, the songs in the back. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my husband. He's a pastor. And right now he works as a student counselor at Bogenhofen Seminary in Austria, which is our one and only school in Austria. We have it's a high school, and we have other things like the theology seminary there. So. Uh, as you can see, my girl at the wedding on the beach. Girls love weddings, so. <laughs> yeah. And my small one, Nina, Lorna, and Nina. That's her name. And we as a family together. So much to myself, I'm a nurse by my profession, and uh, I am working in a team in Austria for two years now for Girls for Christ. I'm part of a team, as I mentioned. It's not only one person which is doing the job there. It's a team. And um, I want to present a little bit of the work we do in our country. Um, why are we doing this? When I was preparing this presentation, I did a research on many things, and then I thought of one person in the Bible, and maybe you brought your Bibles with, we, with you. You can open your Bible and go to Daniel chapter 1. And we can read there. Verse 6. And it says, among these were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Okay? So, who is mentioned first? Can you remember what I was reading? Who is the first mentioned? Pardon me? I read again. Among these were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Okay, I want to read another one as well. It's the verse 8. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. What is he doing here? He wants not to defile himself. For me, he was a slave. He was a slave, <laughs> but... He's taking a decision and he points his feet. That's true. So he's making a decision. And it's not only him. There are some others. But what without Daniel? What would happen to those, to these friends if Daniel wouldn't have been a leader, a guide for them? And if you go on in the story in Daniel, we can also see that they learned from him. When we go to Daniel chapter 3 and we read verse uh, 20, verse 12, let's see, let's, 12. let's read uh, verse 12. It says, But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, O king. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. So what are they doing? Do you hear that? Daniel is mentioned here? I don't know where he is, but he's not there. So Daniel, he was the leader, he was the guide, and then he had followers. And then let's read again in chapter 3, verse 28, what happens next. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. So what happens? It's a snowball effect. There was one guy who was willing to stand for his faith. He was a, a leader, a guide, and then he had the followers. And the followers, they stood up. And who is coming next? The king. And he's praising God. Before he was cursing them, and after that, he's praising God. 
So why are we doing this work? Do you think Daniel stood up because he, he was so proud of himself? What was the reason he stood up for his faith? Love God. He loved God. That's the point. We just heard it. He loved God. He understood it and he spread the love. So his friends understood and then the king understood as well. So it's our work to do as well that we become these leaders and guides in our church. I asked the Austrian Union to give me the numbers of uh, the girls aged between 12 and 21 and as you can see from this graphic it's only 25% baptized, the others are not. That doesn't mean that they are not joining the program, that doesn't mean that they are not in love with God, but it tells us they haven't made the real decision yet. So it calls us to do the job, to reach these kids. <coughs> On purpose, I put this word there. It's not a project, it's not a program, it's a ministry. And what's the, what's the difference between a program and a ministry? Can you tell me? Maybe you just give me some answers. What's the difference between ministry and a project and a program? Have any ideas? I think ministry is a long-term action. So that's right. That's right. kind of yeah. It's part of the church. That's very right. Another idea? Any ideas? You have to nourish the ministry. You have to keep up with the ministry. You cannot give up to it. Okay. You have a project. You finish. That's it. Okay. So you have a beginning and an end, and then it it was stuck. Okay. Another ideas? It's a lifestyle. I think. That's a very good answer. Thank you. It's a lifestyle. Because it's not only something we do on Sabbath. Yeah, it's every day. It should be every day in our daily life. It should be in our sur surrounding, our neighborhood, our family, in church. <coughs> so it's a lifestyle. We want to make a difference. What difference? Do um, you have any ideas why young people leave the church? I'm pretty sure that you all have friends, they left the church, or they are thinking of maybe leaving the church. Do you have any reason for it? Why, why, do you want, why do they want to leave the church? Because they weren't appreciated. They were not appreciated, yes. Mm -hmm. They think it's boring. Do you have any idea why people leave the church, the young people? Sometimes it is boring. Sometimes it is boring, so you underline that. Just, uh, just okay. uh, an imagination. And there are many other reasons. Uh, so mention some, the, mention some. Um, people leave the church because they don't have uh, they can't get a connection to Christ. Okay. Everyone is talking about it, mm -hmm. and uh, some are having uh, their experiences, mm -hmm. and they don't. And mm -hmm. uh, it's like, uh, yeah, what life offers. Um, sometimes people have uh, bad uh, events in their okay. life, and they're um, coping with it absolutely different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come closer to God, and others are uh, running away. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good point as well. Because yeah. they have more friends outside the church mm -hmm. and inside the church. Mm -hmm. Peer pressure. Peer pressure, yes. Some others disappointed. Disappointed. That experience, yes. Any reasons you know? Well, I wanted to mention friends as well because sometimes or often you don't have very good friends in church. I do have, but I think many have more friends outside, mm -hmm. or better friends, or or sometimes in church you only meet on Sabbath, and that's it. But that's not during the week, so it's not on daily basis. Day, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other reasons? Maybe the image that we gave to the to the youth is that when <coughs> you're in church, we do some kind of things. We have some kinds of. Um, We just uh, an example. 
Okay, when we are in church, we just have to settle, maybe wear some, some kind of, of dress. But when we are outside, the guys, they saw us, what we're, maybe we, we wear something else, maybe some mini skirt. And why do you, you don't wear the same things in church? So it's, I don't find the word how to say that, that they don't. That we, we are not authentic. Yes. Maybe this is this, the right this is, Okay. We, we give the wrong. Um, we are not honest. Okay. Thank you. We are mm -hmm. not honest. Okay. And, and the guy, this whole that. Okay. So the, the young field. people see that you're kind of. Or maybe the leader also. They're the, maybe the leader also in the church. Yes. They don't. Um, they're not honest. Okay. Maybe in church they do something and then outside they do other things that they are not. Doing. So the young people watch them and they can see that mm -hmm. it's not always like it. Yeah. Like they pretend. Yes. Okay. What about you in Bulgaria? Can you tell us what are the reasons why the young... Perhaps there um, young people are tempted by the outside world because there, there are no rules. Uh, 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 they feel more free... Uh, uh, um, uh, especially uh, especially when, when they're young because uh, uh, they want to party, they want these things uh, when they're in puberty and they don't realize that uh, uh, the outside world actually uh, is much riskier than uh, the, uh, the world in church and that's why um, uh, it's, it's very important to have friends in church uh, who can support us and can show us the important things there and not so uh, uh, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have friends uh, of the outside, outside mm -hmm. world, but when we uh, when we have more friends in the outside world, we are uh, we are afraid that uh, they might not accept us uh, our uh, our okay. visions mm -hmm. and uh, beliefs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So we mentioned a few things, um, reasons why young people. And leaving the church so <laughs> some are just not even interested like you mentioned is there something we can do for these people we can pray that's true we can try to be friends but still we have to accept sometimes as well that God gave us a free will and they turned and we have to let them go in some ways, we can still pray, but we have to accept them. Don't put more pressure on them. We have a reason mentioned because they don't have friends in the church. Yesterday we had one lady, she mentioned that they're taking care of three churches and there's only one girl in the age of 10 years and no other girl around her. So that's the real case. So we have to think about how we can reach these young girls as well. So it's something very personal, I would say. Like we mentioned that it's a lifestyle. So it's up to me when I'm trying to be a friend to this girl. I have to go to her. I have to take care of her. I have to find maybe a way that she can find other friends in the church. Today it's so easy. Everybody has social network in any kind of ways, you know. And uh, so the world became very small. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, but it needs to be done. And we need a social gathering where they can get friends and connect with them. So this is Gospel Christ, especially one thing we can do. We connect. Like you see, we want to have a relationship with them. We want to encourage them. Relationship which is leading them and guiding them to the basics. Mm -hmm. It's not that we want to bind them to ourselves. We want to bring them to the Word of God and to Jesus. Like you mentioned, they see it all around, they hear it, they talk about Jesus, but they have no relationship with Jesus. So it's our work to do that we bring them closer to Him. There's an important thing we always try to give the girls when we want to 
we want them to see themselves in the way that Jesus sees them. And there's a short clip I want to show you. It speaks for itself. You are beautiful. You are smart. You are funny. You are kind. You are unique. You are worthy of love and affection. You are never too much. And you are always enough. You are precious. You are a diamond, a rose, a pearl, the most stunning of all God's creation. You are worth more than you could ever imagine. Worth more than the numbers on the scale, or the hair product you use, or the shoes you wear. More than how many girls wish they were you, or how many guys wish they had you. More than the price tags on your clothes, or the percentage at the top of your math test, or even the number of followers you have on Twitter. Your worth surpasses all earthly things, because in the eyes of the Lord God, you are loved, and you are worth dying for. Regardless of who you think you are, whether you model in a magazine, or you model pottery with grandma, whether you're on the hot list or the not list, whether you're a head cheerleader or a high school dropout, whether you're Miss Popular or you've never had anyone you could call a friend, whether you love yourself and love your life or you can't stand to look in the mirror and you feel as if everything in your life is falling apart, whether you're such a winner or you feel like the world's biggest failure, regardless of who you think you are, the reality is, is that you deserve someone who would give up their life for you because you are powerful and strong and capable. Read about the women in the Bible. Esther, Ruth, Martha, Mary. These women changed the world forever. And inside of you, each and every one of you is a woman with that same power and that same strength and that same world-changing capability. And your responsibility is to find that woman and to set that woman free. This is who you are. And any voices in your mind that try and tell you differently are from the enemy. And the next time you hear James, this is what you say. You say, not uh not me, Satan. I am a daughter of the living God, cherished, loved, and adored above all things by the creator of all things for the glory of him who is greater than all things. I am awesome. And please, don't you forget This is something we want to give these girls. To work on their self-esteem and to see themselves in God's way. We always invite uh, people to give testimonies, or we gave testimonies by ourselves as well for the, for the kids and for the young girls. And there was one lady yesterday here. She mentioned they had, they had the Pathfinder group over at home for a sleepover, and then they had this certain topic that was about sex and intimacy and things like, you know, like you know, people want to know about. So okay, they gave them the facts and everything. And afterwards, <coughs> the leaders from the Pathfinder group were willing to give their testimonies. And on the next day, they talked about the program and things and asked the kids, and the kids said, this was the best, the testimony. This is something that makes them makes ourselves real for them, that helps them to see us in a human way, and 
it, it helps them to see us also that we are struggling and that we are having problems and we are, we are having doubts. So it makes it possible for them to become a Christian as well because they see, okay, I don't have to be perfect mm -hmm. before I come to Christ. He's taking me like I am right now and he's helping me to become a better human being, to become a better person, a lovely person, and a loving person. So this is something that really helps to give testimony. We also try to help the girls when we come together for this weekend and they come. We have to, we always make this experience that they, in a very short time actually, we, we come together Friday night, meet until Sunday afternoon. In a very short time they come and talk to us. And sometimes they tell us things we would not have imagined that this is possible. And things they really are in need. So when you come to the point that you feel like you cannot help anymore, please try to find an expert. Try to find a professional person which can help as well. But in first your first place is that you are the one listening, talking to them, trying to find a solution. But this will happen. It's not like only a social gathering. It's very special when there are only girls and only ladies around. It's different. Walls are falling apart. Every girl wants to be loved for what is inside of her that is beautiful. And there's nothing more beautiful than a girl who is in love with Jesus. Maybe this statement makes the point that in that, in that age, relationship, sex, intimacy, and love, these are very important pop topics for the girls. But we want to sharpen their mind that it's more important to be in love with Jesus first before it, to go into a relationship with them. Person. We always ask our girls to bring their instruments so we can make music together. We are glorifying God to that. We are enjoying ourselves and uh, it's always a very nice time when they can come and sometimes I ask some people and say maybe you can prepare something for special music. So they gather as a group in their church, as a teen girls group and they perform on some for special music. So this is something very important as well for Girls for Christ, that is not only the team leading out the whole program, you have to involve the girls, the participants. Yeah? So it's not only entertainment, they should be part of it. We try to educate them, we give them health nuggets and um, some other things as well. Um, and this platform is also a good one where you can really talk about girls' things, you know, because it's more open and you can be free to talk about things. They can ask questions, so you can go deeper into details. Um, it's not like on a team camp when they're all together, you know. And they're not distracted because there's no boy, which is also good. <laughs> they can concentrate on their own um, sex and their own gender, okay? And this is very important. Follow your heart, but take your brain with you. So when we educate them, we always give them this statement as well. That it's important to follow your heart and to go for that. But always think about it as well. You can see some of our girls here sitting in the group listening. And there's another thing. When we talk about beauty, when we come together as girls, you know, we talk about this topic. Um, I want to show you a clip and I go on with the presentation afterwards. <laughs>
it works in our world. <laughs> and our girls, they don't see it sometimes that it happens like that. And they really try to look like a person which is on the poster. So this is also a very important topic you should talk about because you have to, like we talked about the self-esteem, it's connected to beauty as well, to give them the opportunity to think about, okay, how does it really work in our world when I see all these pictures and movies and things like that? There's so much around it and so much about it, about beauty, but there is so much work they put in it that it looks like that. And our girls, they really try to look like that without all this help, with all the hairdresser, with all the, you know, you've seen how many people who are doing this, and then afterwards they did the thing on the computer as well. So it's not real. So it's very hard for them actually to reach this goal. And many of them have this goal to look like a girl like that. They put a lot of effort in that. So we want to teach them to use this time wisely and better for other things to get in a better relationship with God and Christ and then they see themselves in another way and they don't compare themselves with all the pictures they are all around them. We try to do it in practical ways like you see here. We do interaction and we have a lot of fun. We always have a game night so we ask them before they come together, prepare something, we can think of a game, we can uh, play together, and it's real fun. We have a lot of fun, and that's very important that they can see that we are also laughing and loving. Very serious, so sitting with and praying and doing things like that. It's important that they have this social connection to us, and they can challenge us, and then we have the opportunity to uh, get to know each other way better than if you only do the you know sermon or something uh, It's so different when you interact with them. So this is very important But it should not be the whole gospel crisis entertainment. It should be all together all of these parts You see some pictures here they have to do a task This one is a task they have to take the penne on the spaghetti and put it into the bowl but all with the mouth. So there's one certain thing. We always give them room to take pictures because this is also very important for, for girls. So we have kind of a fun stuff and we have certain areas where they can come together as friends and take pictures and give them some tools or as you can see from here. And two years ago we had one of our helpers, she did all the photographs she um, made nice postcards, put it online, they could download it with a Bible verse or a text or something, which is also important for them after the meeting. They can show to some other friends and tell them about Gospel Christ and have something in their hand they can use for themselves, which is very personal. It's not only one gift everybody gets, it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Sure, we talk about serious but important things. So we talk to the young ones about serious and important things, but also as a team. So when there's some something coming up with one girl, we talk about how can we help, how can we um, be um, friends to them, how can we continue after this meeting to help them. So this is also uh, for you as a team important that you have this communication between yourself as well. Who is it? I can only tell now from Austria. It's a team of uh, three ladies. You can see we're in different ages, which is also important. We've got Gabi, Mario, and me. Um, Gabi, she's the oldest. She's the, the leader, I would say. While we're a team, she doesn't like me to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> on the paper it is like that. And she's the oldest, and she went through teenage years with her girl, and um, so I would say she has the experience we need. I'm young, I have two girls there. Well, the one is now turning 10, so <laughs> she's becoming a teen, but she's not yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still idealistic. I have my visions, I have my dreams. I think, oh, she's becoming 
like that or she would do that and so but they already got through this stage. Uh, Mama and she's got three girls and uh, so she knows all about it. What it means to live with a teen girl and that makes it easier. So it shouldn't be, it's my opinion, only a team of young adults who hasn't got um, teenage girls in that age because it's very important that you have experienced people in your team. So you see on the right and the very left we have also young people. They are longer in the team actually than we are. We just joined three, uh, two years ago. They've been in the team before. They help us to organize uh, the game night or a game in the afternoon or uh, to get to know each other. There's a game Friday night or something. So they do a lot of organization for us, which is a big help. And they are involved as well. And they are also taking care of some girls in their church. So they bring them to this camp and this is also very important. Well, they were <coughs> at the first Girls for Christ. So we, we saw these two talents mm -hmm. and we took them into our team. That's very beginning. good. Yeah, we, we love them. <coughs> yes. We're happy to have them. So you see our group here. On the very right, you see uh, Anita, she's our cook. Uh, to have a good cook is also important for girls. She's trying to bring a lot of <coughs> fruits and vegetables and things like that because girls are taking care of the weight in that age. So they're picky and things. So she makes everything fresh and nice and beautiful, decorates the table so it looks nice. This is important. Where? Well, you have several options to do that. You can do it at home, like you have a teen girls group in your home. You can do it at church, or you can have a camp. There are so many ways. We have different ways in every country. Swiss um, has got sleepovers. They come together Sabbath afternoon, stay overnight, and spend Sunday, maybe a whole day together on certain topics. So they do this in church. Or you can have a teen group if you have enough girls in your church and you can gather them. You just bring them home and give them the time to socialize or to do Bible studies or to do a field trip or outreach or whatever. So this is whatever you want to do. And the annual camp, we do it once a year. You can do it more often, but we just do it right now once a year. Uh, it's a good opportunity like I mentioned before, if there's only one girl in three churches around, she can get to know somebody from other churches which are far away maybe, but still she has got friends in the church. When in the home you can do it weekly, in the church you could do weekly or quarterly, and then you have the annual camp which is once a year. So this is one of our invitations we made. <coughs> we have certain words, uh, topics which are interest uh, in interest for the, the young people, and um, the dates. So this is only an example that you can see it. I heard from Swiss they have a flyer, but still they try more. Uh, they put more emphasis on Facebook, so they do more on social net network. It's a possibility possibility as well. If you have your uh, homepage in your church, you can put it on there. Um, but still, when you do it in your whole country, you might need a flyer as well. An example to do is, like I mentioned, the homepage. You can put more stuff on it, not only the dates or something, or comments or pictures. You can do more creative things as well. You can give cooking class, sewing course, music workshop, outreach. There are several things and ideas you can do. And our goal is to reach the unreached and to support the reached girls. And I'll just show you a few slideshow from our last camp.
<clears throat> future brainstorming. I want you to make a concept for yourself. How would you start Girls for Christ in your church or in your district or in your country? So write down a few ideas. I have paper here. You've got pencils. Are going to present what you've written. Are we going to collect and do the brainstorming together afterwards? Is anybody here who needs more? A paper or something? <coughs> so I give you a few minutes to. Uh, 